Hey guys, it's Alexei, and in this part of the review, I'm going to look at trees and how well Thea handles a lot of trees. Now, I have a tree from the content browser. I just grabbed it from one of these, you know, plants, whatever it is. It's the maple cow. Internet. Anyway, and then I put in a cloner, turn on render instances, put a sun, and then I hit render. Now you'll notice the transferring is a bit slower now because there's 18,000 trees. But look, there it's done. That was like, what, six seconds? Look at that, it's rendering. And also notice again, GPU and CPU rendering together and giving me this lovely result. Look at this thing clean up. God, I think it's, my ISO is a bit too high there. Maybe even like 200, or no, it's 700. Look at that, it's a forest right before your eyes. And you can just pan through it. And this is all like geometry. These are all real trees with leaves and everything. It blows my mind. And you know, look on this. I love like looking on the edge of the forest. And you, you know, you can really see that it's 3D. And there's little, you know, look at these little trees and everything. And you can zoom in there, you know. You can run into the leaves. And you can see, look, there's a forest there. And see, it's dark in the forest. But you can crank up the ISO. And you can see there's like, you know, stuff rendering inside there. It's really neat. You know, obviously inside the forest there's like, you know, this is like sunlight bouncing, you know, through all the leaves and then bouncing off. And so there's a lot less light. So it takes up a lot longer to clean up. Obviously, if you're rendering a scene in here, you'd probably add some fake lights and stuff so that it doesn't have to actually do this. Maybe some lights behind the camera. So it doesn't have to calculate actually sun bouncing through. But the point is it can and it's usable, you know. And this stuff you can... You know, you can, you can do like it, you can set it like send it 10 seconds per frame. And then you can just, you know, once you render an animation and you're happy with it, you can just throw it on a farm. And then on the farm, it'll render fields. Take this ISO back down to like 200. Look at this, we've got canopy with trees and you can, you know, animate birds and stuff jumping around here. And behind you, there's like a real forest with real trees. It's not like, you know, 2D placards or anything. You just, and look how fast it's cleaning up. It's just like, boom. It's crazy. And you also notice in this scene, you have the, you can see the FPS of how fast the GPU and the CPU are calculating. You notice before, the CPU and the GPU are calculating at the same speed. Because like with, you know, lots of tiny details, the CPU actually helps out a lot where the GPU fails. Because the GPU is good for doing stuff with like lots of the same stuff. But there's lots of tiny details, that's where the CPU takes over. So these guys did an amazing job at coding these things. Look how clean that is. And I was just talking for like 10 seconds. And I just cleaned up and that's it. You know, you can use this as a render. And just to show you how easy it is to add more trees, because right now it's just one set of tree, right? So let's go to our content browser, let's grab a bonsai. Now let's get this clone and let's clone, let's copy it, and let's delete this tree from inside. And let's make this like 50, because otherwise it's too many trees. Let's stick them in a the cloner and let's scale them up. There you go. Sure we don't need that many trees. Let's make it like 20. There we go. And we do not need the random effector here. So let's scale this tree up. There's still too many trees. We just need to add like, I don't know, 10 here. That's, there we go, perfect. Maybe a bit bigger. Okay, cool. I'm gonna give the random effector a bit more because I don't like how the same those ones are. So, and then we can just this one, perfect. And now let's hit render again. So, you know, similar footing materials, just stuff from the content browser. And it transfers. And hopefully, it's already rendering, so it's already in the engine. And there we go. Look at that. We got a forest with our new tree in it. How neat is that? I don't know. I'm just, I love looking at this. I just love panning around it. Just boom. Oh, and this is a color filter. Explains a lot. I don't know, maybe the color filter is nice. Seems to be, seems to forget to turn off some settings. Anyway, it's really neat. You just add trees and there, look at that. Just imagine yourself flying through this scene, this little lake and stuff and birds and monkeys running around. Anyway. So yeah, next thing I wanna show you is this little thing I've been working on with Forrester, another awesome plugin. But I wanna show you what you can do with materials while we're on the topic of vegetation. If you hit render here now, you'll see these leaves. And you know, they're like, kind of look plasticky. 
you know, their leaves. That's what you usually get without, you know, putting subsurface scattering on. But while Thea does have subsurface scattering, it also has translucence. It's like a really fast, cheap subsurface scattering. You just crank it up, maybe not all the way. Okay, let's put it all the way. And look how nice that looks. And now, you can actually, like, there's the sun over there. You can see that the leaves, the ones, you know, where there's many leaves overlapping, it's darker. And when there's a, no leaves, it goes lighter. And it's a really nice effect. It makes it look like, you know, much more realistic. It's just you gotta, another thing that I just love about Thea. So anyway, this is like say. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to click on the link below to see the full review. And I'll see you in the next part.